Kanyam, Kanyam, Shaita, Shaita, Tava, Tava, Pada, Pada, Saroja, Saroja, Gandam, Agraya, Agraya, Sanmukaritam, Sanmukaritam, Janata Pavarga, Lakshmi, Lakshmi, Alayam, Alayam, Twaviknaya, Twaviknaya, Gunalashya, Gunalashya, Gunalayashya, Gunalayashya, Matya, Matya. So da so sada saduru saduru bayam bayam ata ata vivikta vivikta drishti drishti kamyam shayeta tavapada saroja gandam agraya sanmukaritam. Janata Kapa Vargam Lakshmi Alayam Twaviknaya Gunalashya Matya Sadharu Bhayam Arta Vivikta Drishti Kanyam Shayeta Tavapada Sarocha Gandam Agraya Sanmukharitam Janataka Pavarkam Lakshmi Alayam Twaviknaya Gunalashya Lakshmi Alayam Twaviknaya Gunalashya 
Niyalayam Pravik Nanaya Gunalashya Matya Sadoru Payam Abda Vivikta Drishti Matya Sadoru Payam Yam Shraita Tavapada Sarocha Gandam Yam Shraita Tavapada Sarocha Gandam Akraya Sanmukharikam Janataka Pavarkam Akraya Sanmukharikam Janataka Pavarkam Lakshmi Alayam Pravit Nanaya Ganalashya Marchya Sato Rupayam Arta Vivikta Drishti Marchya Sato
would take shelter of. Tava, you are Pada of the feet. Saroja of the lotus. Gandam, the aroma. Agraya, having smelled. Sat, by great saints. Mukaritam, described. Janata, for all people. For all people. Apavargam, Apavargam, bestowing liberation. Bestowing liberation. Lakshmi, Lakshmi, of the goddess of fortune. Of the goddess of fortune. Alayam, Alayam, the place of residence. The place of residence. Two, two, two but. but. Avigaya, Avigad, Avig, Aviganaya, not taking seriously. Not taking seriously. Not taking seriously. Guna, of all transcendental qualities. Alayash, of the abode. Marcia, nourish, mortal, sada, always, uru, great, bayam, one who has fear. Arta, the best, the best interest. The best interest. Vivita, ascertaining. Dristi, whose insight. Translation, the aroma of your lotus feet which is glorified by great saints, awards people liberation, and is the abode of Goddess Lakshmi. What woman would take shelter of any other man after savoring that aroma? Since you are the abode of transcendental qualities, what mortal woman with the insight to distinguish her own true interest would disregard that fragrance and depend instead on someone who is always subject to terrible fear. 英文,你念他足的方向,你为他的圣洁,清重,清人的解决,并一直拉住你的神的居所, 能辨別自己真正的一的凡間女子,有誰會漠視那分方,分向取而代之去依靠某個,總是屈服於可怕的恐懼之人。Purport, in text 16, Lord Krishna claimed that he was Gunair Hina, bereft of all good qualities. To refute this claim, the devoted Rukmini here states that the Lord is Gunalaya, the abode of all good qualities. In a single moment, the so-called powerful men of this world can be reduced to utter helplessness and confusion. Indeed, destruction is the inevitable fate of all powerful masculine bodies. The Lord, however, as an eternal spiritual body that is omnipotent and infinitely beautiful. And thus, as Queen Rukmini argues here, 
How could any sane, enlightened woman take shelter of anyone but the Supreme Lord Krishna? So Rukmini is replying, she's saying that actually Krishna, you are you have you are the abode of all good qualities. And uh, Queen Rukmini describes about the aroma of the lotus feet of the Lord. How is the the aroma which comes from the lotus feet of the Lord is so attractive that people become 
so um, they both they become controlled by that aroma and they take they go back to God. Just, just compare the material world. You know, I don't know. In, in London, you know, in London, in the temple in London, in Soho Street, they have a lunch program. And people come there, and you know, London is often a you know, miserable climate, so people all wear socks, you know, yeah. and they come with their smelly socks sometimes, you know. Because in England, most, you know, they're not accustomed to taking their shoes off, and we tell them, have to take your shoes off. But when they take their shoes off, <laughs> the smell sometimes. And sometimes you have to tell them, take your socks off as well. <laughs> and go and wash your feet. <laughs> yeah. But here, uh, Rukmini is glorifying the particular the special aroma which comes from the lotus feet of Krishna. We like nice, pleasing smells, right? Yeah. In perfume industry, you know, business people may have perfumes, eau de cologne, and this kind of perfume. Right? Expensive. Yeah, expensive stuff. You know, people spend a lot of money. So Krishna's body has the fragrance of kasturi. Kasturi, it's a very captivating aroma. So Krishna's body emanates with this aroma of kasturi. And uh, it's also said that Draupadi uh, had a particular fragrance or aroma coming from her body, which would just drive men mad. <laughs> the Ropadi was, you know, she was uh, born from the fire. She's not an ordinary woman. She was a demi demigod from the and it wasn't just her hair, but just the, the, the aroma coming from her, the fragrance. The great Kshatriya kings already had many wives. They'd go mad. So that, so that was why when uh, Maharaj Draupada had her Swayambara, you know, they had to come and pierce the eye of the fish. It was a, a big, a serious, a big challenge. If you wanted to, if you wanted to win the hand of Draupadi, Draupadi in marriage, you had to take part in a contest. And they had the archery contest to pierce the eye of a fish. The fish was up in the ceiling. And you had to fire the arrow. Pierce the eye of the and you have to look at the reflection in the water. 
如果下邊有一盆水咧，就係一個反倒影嚟嘅，你就好似個水係喐動。This was because Draupadi was a very special woman. So she had to have a very special man for a husband. So the, her father, Maharaj Draupada, arranged this contest. And of course, Arjuna won. And, and took her home. And then Queen Kunti said, "Whatever you want, you have to share with your brothers." So, so later on, Vyasadev came, and he confirmed that it was all right that she could do that. Anyway, the point was that there was this. Powerful fragrance coming from the body of Draupadi. And yeah, our senses are difficult to control. We have trouble. Everyone has trouble to control their senses. Of course, the tongue is the most difficult to control. But any one of the senses on which the mind dwells can carry away the, even a man of intelligence. So in this case, they're talking about the aroma, the particular smell, how it, it can captivate people's minds. So Queen Rukmini says that you know, how could anybody who has ever uh, smelled this fragrance ever accept a common man when Krishna is there? Why should they accept a common man when Krishna is there? If they've actually sm smelled that fragrance, the aroma from Krishna's lotus feet. Yeah, they'd have to be crazy, right? Except uh, an ordinary man. Smelly feet. <laughs> Horrible smelling. <laughs> but Krishna's feet. Of course, the, the reference to Krishna's feet is implying service to Krishna. Prabhupada often told us that when we talk about feet, it means service. Accepting the shelter of the lotus feet means taking taking up service under such the But in the third canto there's some interesting reference uh, about Krishna's lotus feet. Mother Devahuti, the mother of Lord Kapila, was describing her situation. And she was talking about how it's surprising that Lord Kapila could take birth in her womb. Because she said Lord Kapila is Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu is the cause of everything. Everything comes from him. So how could he come from me? It appears, it appears contradictory. This is the Lord's Leela. And then, then she goes on to say, well, it's not really surprising. Because at the time of the devastation, sometimes the Lord will take the form of a child. 
即係當宇宙毀滅嘅時候咧，主有時會係以一個小孩嬰兒嘅形象出現。And he will lay down on a banyan leaf on the ocean of devastation。佢會躺喺呢個毀滅嘅海洋咧，係躺在一個榕樹葉上。There's a great flood at the time of dissolution of the universe. 當個宇宙啊被淹沒嘅時候咧，有一個 there's a big flood， 哦，誒，水浸。Okay, and so at that time, the Lord will take, can assume the form of a child, and he there's a, he lays down on the banyan leaf on a banyan leaf. You have a picture. You have a picture. Yeah. And he's sucking his toe. Why is he sucking his toe? Because he thinks so many great sages and great they're all captivated by my lotus feet. They're all they're so absorbed in meditating and their minds are so contemplating my lotus feet. There must be something special about them. <laughs> so that's why he's tasting his toes. He wants to know what is it about my feet that they're so captivated by. So this is uh, so Queen Kun and uh, Devahuti says that. So if if at the time of devastation he do, he can do this, it's not it's not impossible that he can also lay down in my womb. So he is thinking that even in the midst of the flood, he can do that. He can lay down in my womb. So he is thinking that even in the midst of the flood, he can do that. He can lay down in my womb. So he is thinking that even in the midst of the flood, he can do that. Krishna was telling her, "I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm not worthy to be a. I'm not a good match for you as a husband." I don't have a good birth. I don't have money. I don't. I'm not good looking. I, I, I'm not. I have no good qualities for you. But Rukmini is saying, no, actually, you have all the good qualities. Everything comes from you. And even your lotus feet are so attractive to people. You know, of course, in Chinese culture, women all wanted to have beautiful feet, right? It was very important for women to have beautiful feet. And that was why they would bind the feet, right? Because they thought small feet were very beautiful. So women, their feet would be bound for up until they would, until they be married, right? So, 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 People would do these things. They want to be beautiful. <laughs> Even today, people do a lot of things to make themselves beautiful. So Krishna's, Krishna's feet are especially beautiful. And it said when we, when we chant the holy name, if you have difficulty Control your mind. We should concentrate on Krishna's lotus feet. So, if you are in the midst of the flood, you should be concentrated on Krishna's lotus feet. 
But not qualified. We begin our meditation from this lotus. So trying to control the mind, we have to push fix the mind on Krishna's lotus feet. And there's wonderful markings on Krishna's lotus feet. Mm, auspicious markings like, like the lotus flower and the thunderbolt and the instrument for controlling elephants and the umbrella and the, 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 the chakra Fish. Yeah, fish also. With different markings are all very auspicious. And they have special significance. Each of the markings has special significance. Control the mind. The elephant, our mind is like a stubborn elephant. So that instrument to control the elephant. And the thunderbolt is to smash the mountain of sinful desires which are in our mind. And the umbrella is to give us shelter from the material energy. All of these different markings each have some particular significance. So when we perform devotional service, the first thing we do is to fix the mind on the lotus feet. The great devotee Maharaj Ambarish would engage all of his senses in the service of the Lord. Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindaryor Vachamsi Vaikuntha Gunal Mubanami Haro Hare Sadhana Marjanadishu Shrutin Chakra Chutta Sat Patodaye Like that, anyway, there's a verse describing nice verse in the Describing how Maharaj Andarish first of all fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So in the same way when we are chanting the holy name, we have to begin from the lotus feet, fix the mind on Krishna's lotus feet. And when we study Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to begin from the lotus feet, the Pada Padma. Pada Padma means the first two cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to know that well, and then we can go on to the other cantos. Here we are reading on the, from the tenth canto. This is the smiling face of the Bhagavatam. Before we look on the face of the Lord, we have to work from the lotus feet. We work, work up progressively, step by step. We don't want to just jump to the tenth canto without studying the earlier cantos. It's important for us to hear from the beginning. Of course, Srila Prabhupada gave us the Krishna book, which is a summary study of the tenth canto. 
當然聖巴阿巴咧係將呢個第十篇嘅總結咧，佢係組成咗《Krishna 故事書》，快樂的完全。And Shri Prabhupada wrote that book in such a way that even one is a neophyte and a novice in Krishna consciousness, that they can be greatly benefited by hearing the past tense of Krishna. 咁巴阿巴嘅用意咧，就係讓一啲初階嘅人士咧，都可以睇到、領略、嚟感受到第十篇嘅甜美咧，去去吸引佢哋。And Prabhupada was very careful in presenting the confidential pastimes of Krishna, which are told in the tenth canto. The confidential pastimes refer, of course, to Krishna and his pastimes in Braja with the Gopi. 當然佢最經密嘅師父時光咧，就喺 Braja 係見到神嘅温大龍嗰個。But Prabhupada wanted to present the pastimes of Lord Krishna to the world. So he put the tenth canto in such a form so that it can be read by anybody. In the preface to the Krishna book, Prabhupada writes. This book will be good for three kinds of people. He said, if somebody is a perfect pure devotee, then they'll take great pleasure in hearing the past tenses. And if somebody is on the path, beginning the, or on the path of Krishna consciousness, working to become a, 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 good, a good devotee, then they will be greatly benefited by reading this book. And if one has no interest in Krishna consciousness, but just likes to read books, he will take great pleasure in reading this book. 而對一個完全冇興趣靈修嘅人咧，即使冇嚟興趣靈修，佢閱讀啊第十篇呢個啊快樂完全咧，亦都係對佢有同樣嘅好處。What when I was in Russia, we there was we were having prophets, we had sapuja, and we let different devotees make offerings to prophet. And one one Russian man, he was describing how he got the Krishna book. 咁最近啊，馬哈喺俄羅斯 Russia 係慶祝巴爾巴嘅 Vyasa Puja 咧，有一位奉獻者咧就係描述到佢點樣啊快樂咁去閱讀呢個 Krishna 嘅啊巴爾巴呢個快樂嘅完全。So he he said before he was a devotee, he said he was a materialistic sense enjoyer. 佢話喺我加入去誒 Krishna 意識之國之前，我係一個物完全物質享樂嘅主義嘅人。So somebody came by selling books, a Krishna book, and he looked at the book, and it said, "the the, the reservoir of all pleasure." You have a friend who came to buy buy a book, "The Pleasure of Reading." He saw the book and it said, "This is the pleasure of reading." So he thought, "Oh, this must be all about sense gratification." <laughs> and then he read the book, he found out it was all about God. <laughs> but he became a devotee. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada said this book will be good for all, even people who are not devotees, because it has all kinds of stories. It has love stories. It has, uh, there's Mis intrigue and mystery and uh, crime. So Baba Wa, this book is actually for all people. They are very fond of reading. They also like to read this book. Because people are very fond of reading stories about what? Uh, about the Buddhas or the Buddhas. There are wars and great battles and fighting with demons. People like all these different kinds of. Things they can get pleasure from. They really like to read about the pleasures. You see how the Srimad Bhagavatam is so wonderful. It provides every kind of uh, pastime, every kind of lila is there. And we in the Buddhist world, all the interesting and joyful pleasures. 
and is presented in the most wonderful manner. Just like this chapter we're hearing is all about householder, family life, husband and wife, and they're talking. This is Grihastas of white men, they're busy in talking to each other. And of course here Krishna has been saying these things, teasing Rukmini, telling her. And Rukmini is replying to Krishna. So Krishna was thinking he would tease Rukmini. But Rukmini becomes more glorious from it. She, becomes, she shows her great devotion. <coughs> okay, any question? Yeah? Here in the purport, it's mentioned um, in the men of this world can be reduced to utter helplessness and confusion. Can we have an example of confusion? In the material world, there's so much confusion. Under the material energy, under the spell of illusion, people are always confused. What to do? How am I going to make money? What to do? How will I be happy? Where will I enjoy? Oh, I'm so confused. How should I invest my money? Which house should I buy? Where should I live? Oh, so there people are always confused. Who should I believe? Who is God? 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 Then they, they're not confused. They know what they have to do. The devotees know very clearly what their duty is, what they have to do. It's not a problem for them. Every situation is. So, but in the material world, when the people don't have any shelter, they're lost. They're like a helpless, like a dog which has no master. The, the street dog has no home. So the people in the material world are like that. They're they're helpless, they're confused, they're hopeless. They don't know what's going to happen next to them. They're trying to find happiness here. But they can never be successful. We are Shri Prabhupada's dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be the dog of God. Mm -hmm. right? We wear our coat, mm -hmm. our neck beats, and our dog collar. Mm -hmm. right? This is our dog collar. Mm -hmm. We identify ourselves. Mm -hmm. Krishna is the master, and we are his servants. Mm -hmm. And we are very fortunate. 